Hi, my name is Steve Fox. I'm a pulmonary critical care fellow at the Cleveland Clinic. In this video, we'll be talking about the basics of lung ultrasound. It will serve as the introduction to the series on a lung ultrasound in COVID-19 patients. It's important to understand the general method for performing the exam and the pattern seen before we delve into the specifics for COVID-19 patients. So an overview of the talk today, we'll start by how to perform the exam. We'll look at patterns we'll find on lung ultrasound and discuss how to apply them clinically. As a brief case, we start with a 53-year-old male with three days of worsening dyspnea. He's hypoxic, requiring 15-liter non-rebreather. After reviewing the case, our differential includes bacterial or viral pneumonia, as well as heart failure, PE, and COPD exacerbation. The question arises, how would lung ultrasound help to narrow this differential? We'll start by how to perform the exam. Which probe to choose? Linear probe has the highest frequency, so it's best for viewing lung sliding and pleural characteristics. Curvilinear and phased array probe have lower resolution, so are better for deeper structures, such as larger consolidations or effusions. Uh, curvilinear can see multiple rib spaces, while phased array can only see one. All of these are reasonable options. If you only want to choose one to keep it simple, we would recommend choosing the phased array probe. Which exam preset to choose? So many would recommend abdominal. That's the one that I would recommend. Some would use the lung preset. I would avoid the cardiac preset because that has a tendency to limit the appearance of artifacts that are important in lung ultrasound. Where do you place the probe? Uh, there's no single correct method. One option is the four zone method, anterior, upper, and lower lateral on each side. Another option is the eight zone method with anterior, upper, anterior, lower, and then upper lateral and lower lateral on both sides. If your patient is upright or prone, you have additional posterior zones to choose from. Here's a schematic diagram. Um, if you're doing the brief protocol, it would involve R1, R4, L1, and L4. The more complete version would be all eight of these zones. If your patient is upright or prone, then you have additional sites. The way to orient the probe involves putting the probe marker up or toward the patient's head, and remember that that corresponds with the left side of the screen. So here's our typical view. Our key structures include the upper and lower ribs along with their shadows, the pleural interface with sliding shown, and the chest wall. So in summary, we'll start with the abdominal exam mode type using the phased array probe with the probe marker pointed up, and we could choose a four or eight zone protocol. Part two is our patterns in lung ultrasound. A key concept is the idea of the air fluid ratio. If there's more air in the chest, for example, due to pneumothorax or normal lung, we will typically see A lines. A little bit more fluid, we begin to form B line appearance, which is due to an interstitial thickening process. And lower air fluid ratios will give us a consolidation. Now we'll discuss the concept of groups of diagnoses created by ultrasound patterns. So an A pattern indicates air in the chest, which can be normal lung, pneumothorax, COPD, or PE. A B pattern indicates interstitial thickening or edema, which could occur due to cardiogenic pulmonary edema, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, which could be ARDS, it could be interstitial pneumonia, or numerous other processes, or fibrosis. Consolidation pattern is typically due to alveolar filling or collapse. So to start with the A pattern, that is demonstrated by multiple horizontal lines. This occurs due to strong reflection between the pleural interface and the probe, creating this reverberation. B pattern appears as multiple vertical lines. This occurs due to interstitial thickening enabling a circular reflection um, at the pleural interface which the machine interprets as this appearance. It's important to realize that B lines are not just B lines. The number is important. Three is classically considered significant within a rib space. One to two at the basis can be considered normal and it's non-binary. More B lines is more significant. Pleural thickening or irregularity can indicate an inflammatory process, and spared areas with A pattern can indicate as well an asymmetric inflammatory process. The image shown at the left does not have pleural thickening or spared areas, indicating more of a cardiogenic pulmonary edema. The image at the right has both pleural irregularity as well as spared areas with A pattern, indicating more of an inflammatory pattern. It's important to recognize that these features do not distinguish perfectly, and so it's best not to typically hang your hat on these distinguishing features. Consolidation can occur due to alveolar filling or alveolar collapse. 
in this image, you can see that with alveolar filling, the sound waves penetrate lung tissue well, producing a tissue pattern. The lung here looks a bit like liver. Often this is described as hepatization. We see here diaphragm, lung with tissue pattern, as well as infusion. A similar appearance can also occur due to atelectasis, which enables sound waves to pass through the tissue, producing again a lung with tissue pattern. Another type of consolidation important to know is the subpleural consolidation. It is just below the pleura, has an adjacent shred sign, as well as B lines just distal to it. Pleural effusions can be seen typically anechoic, sometimes with septations or loculations. It's usually best seen in the lateral or posterior lateral lung zones. Lung sliding is an important feature to look for. It occurs due to apposition and movement at the pleural interface. In the image to the left, we do see lung sliding occurring. In the image to the right, we do not see lung sliding. This means that the visceral pleural, pleura is not moving along the parietal pleura. This can occur due to pneumothorax, but it's not specific for pneumothorax. It also can occur due to hypoventilation, such as breath holding, or main stem innovation of the opposite lung. It can also occur due to pleurodesis or COPD with large blebs. Though absence of lung sliding is not specific for pneumothorax, lung point is. This image is an example of a lung point with an area of lung sliding, an area of absent lung sliding, and the junction of the two, which is the lung point. Part three, we'll discuss clinical integration. So to go back to our case, uh, that we have our differential. If we find an A pattern, it moves certain diagnoses higher on the differential, including non-pulmonary processes, pneumothorax, COPD, or pulmonary embolism. If we have a B pattern, it moves heart failure and pneumonia potentially higher on the differential diagnosis. And if we have a consolidation, it moves pneumonia higher on the differential. PE can also cause consolidation if it's small and subpleural due to infarct. So some key points in clinical integration. Absence of lung sliding is not specific for pneumothorax, but presence of lung point is. Complete absence of B lines effectively rules out interstitial edema, but the presence of B lines is non-specific. Tissue pattern can be due to atelectasis or consolidation, and the distinction is primarily clinical. Ultrasound is the best imaging modality for pleural effusion, and it's important to remember that ultrasound has a limited ability to determine a specific diagnosis within a given sonographic pattern. So to review, on performing the exam, we recommend the abdominal preset with a phased array probe, four-zone or eight-zone protocol with a probe marker pointed up. We have the patterns including A, B, consolidation, sliding. We'll also see effusions. And key points in integration, remember that ultrasound produces a pattern to help narrow the differential, but it does not by itself make the diagnosis. So some upcoming topics, we'll talk more about B-lines and distinguishing cardiogenic edema from inflammatory edema, and we'll discuss findings specific to COVID-19 patients.